it hurts me to say this because the DeGrom starts were appointment television for me for the last several years, you know, and, and he didn't pitch that often, which we've already talked about. It would be Turner. Turner uh, coming off a season where I believe he played 160 games, hit a couple of whiskers beneath 300, uh, gives you some position uh, flexibility, which Buck clearly would, would like to see. Uh, you know, think Guillaume, uh, uh, you know, a better all-around player than Guillaume, I would say, but think Guillaume in that. Uh, Buck likes that kind of a player. I think most managers would. So uh, as much as it hurts because DeGrom is an artist, he is fantastic, uh, the bottom line is you can't count on him often enough. To me, I'd say Trey Turner. This is an easy call the way I see it. It's Trey Turner. Why? Because, first of all, look at the ages. Jacob DeGrom sure. is on the north side of 30. Trey Turner has a lot of prime years left. And that versatility, you want him at shortstop for a day or two, no problem. You want him in center field, no problem. You want him at second base, no problem. And he is an electrifying athlete. He's a guy who can go first to third. He's a guy who could go steal your 40 to 45 bases. He would transform the entire look and the entire feel of the Met lineup. Now, it would pain me to lose Jacob DeGrom. I know he's a future Hall of Famer. I know he's had an incredible run as a New York Met. Between these two guys, hey, give me the guy who plays every day. Duh! I get to see Trey Turner every single day. It's got to be Turner. Assuming he stays healthy, he's impacting Trey Turner. Would be 150, 160 games potentially. How can you say, and I love DeGrom, and I'm always leaning toward pitching. We've seen it, and it didn't work out. How could you say that you'd rather have DeGrom over Turner? Now, the idea would be to get both in there. Jim, what type of contract could Trey Turner get, and is it realistic for the Mets to potentially sign both DeGrom and Turner? Well, I'll start with the second question first. I think it's realistic. They, they're going to run a high payroll, and they're going to play. I love the checkbook baseball. We talk about it a lot, Sal, but I think they can they can do it. They can afford it. I think I think the number one thing with Turner, though, you have to remember, it's likely to be a three hundred million dollar contract for nine or ten years. Like this is going to be expensive. Most general managers that I've spoken to have spoken about half the league. They think he's going to be the highest paid of this free agent mark, uh, market. And that obviously includes Judge wow. and Correa as premium uh, players as well. So, you know, and Turner's a, you know, he's, he's in, in a lot of ways, he's a unicorn. I hate the term, but uh, he drove in 100. He scored 100. He hit over 25 homers. He stole almost 30 bags. Um, I would not play him in all different positions, though, like, like you guys were suggesting. I would put him in one spot. If he would be willing to play center field, which I don't think is the case, I think he really wants to play shortstop. I think that boxes him out of the Mets, but you could put him at second. You could try to convince him to play center field. He certainly goes anywhere in the line of one to three. Uh, so he would be a, a perfect uh, possibility. But I wouldn't discount them getting both if they were to pursue Turner.